this special edition of Action News at 7. You know, if you don't know anything about Corktown, you may think there's nothing to learn from Detroit's oldest surviving neighborhood. But if you take a moment to talk to people who actually live here and work here, you'll learn about the rich history and the never give up spirit. Tiger Stadium used to be Corktown's main attraction. But its demise has not killed the heart and soul of this gritty and urban setting. It still offers plenty, from restaurants to bars. Slow's Barbecue is thriving, and mainstay bars like LJ's are meeting spots. There are even pockets of industry. If people come and live here, I think the rest will follow. It's very simple. You get more city services, you get more businesses to, to service the uh, the community. Corktown is the oldest neighborhood here in Detroit. Back in the 1800s, Irish immigrants came here to live and called it home. Roughly 2,000 people now live here. We're pretty tight knit. Everybody around here takes care and looks out for each other. Michael uh, Kreese is one of them. Right Do you have hope for Corktown? You got to have hope. But I don't think it's going to go as quickly as a lot of us would like. I think it's going to be stagnant for a while, and we're just going to have to ride it out. There have been setbacks. The organization designed to unify neighborhood development shut down, and businesses have been forced to close. Still, you may wonder why Corktown hasn't withered up and died. The neighborhood is resilient. I think the community is what's going to bail us out. Government ain't going to do it. On a Tuesday night, it's jam-packed in here. We're talking to one of the owners, Phil Cooley, who returned from Europe eight years ago to, to give another chance on Detroit. Why, why so? Um, well, I guess this is the, uh, in my opinion, the only democratic city of all that I've lived in. This was a city that allowed, you know, gave me a chance to participate and get engaged in a community where I could actually make a difference. You're only 32 years old. You transformed this building that's been here since the 1800s into this amazing restaurant, but you're expanding here in Detroit. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's a great city to do business in. The community's really supportive, both the city of Detroit and, and the suburbs have given us tremendous support. So we find this is a city not only that is, you know, fiscally rewarding, but socially rewarding. We're able to do a lot of uh, fun things in the community, give back, and we love living here and working here. What's the secret to your success? I mean, this business has grown 28% every year for the last five years. Now you have another slows to go restaurant that you just opened in December? Um, we try to, you know, practice um, the three, the triple bottom line. I think that's a big part of it, which is social uh, consciousness and environmental uh, sustainability and, and also fiscal, being fiscally sound is important to us as well. And so I think that hopefully creates an atmosphere that people like and they like to support. Now, we did get a chance to talk to Phil's dad a little earlier, and he explained to us that you almost give away half of your salary to charity, and you believe it's important to work in your community, but also to give back in your community. This year, I have. I've been fortunate to be able to do that, and, and it's great. I've got a tremendous staff and tremendous partners that work here all the time, and it allows me to get out and do the volunteering things that I love to do and give back to the community that supports us so much. Like building playscapes for local churches and things of that nature, which is pretty amazing. I have fun, yeah. I get, I, I get, to, I get to wake up and play every day, and so it help a small business get open or just uh, work with a lot of the boards that I work on, build public spaces, whatever it is, I get to wake up and kind of dream a little bit. And real quickly, what's your vision? for the future. I know you have an idea for the train station across uh, the street. And, and what's your vision for Detroit, though? I hope we have like a, a, a nice, slow, sustainable growth that, you know, that everybody gets to participate in and can make a difference. Because um, I, I, I lived in other cities where, you know, gentrification, gentrification came in and swept over and took over, and there wasn't very thoughtful planning. If we plan this out together, I think we're going to have a great city and a great region again. Well, we congratulate you, and we're glad you're in our hometown of Detroit. Thank you so much. All right. And I did talk to Phil's dad. Like I said, they've all moved home. His mom, his dad. He's got his brother here, his sister-in-law. So a wonderful family story and a success story, which we want to hear more of, of course, in the city of Detroit and, of course, across this region, Stephen. All right, Carolyn, thank you so much for introducing us to Philip Cooley. Great guy.